this screen. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church, where we are going to have a worship service today of our lessons in carols. This is a service that goes back. I'll talk more about that later, but we're going to put our own little twist to it a little bit with some beautiful singers that are with us today. And we're also going to <coughs> pray that people aren't, aren't stopped by the impending doom of the rain and that they'll get here in time for their readings. And I'll be filling in for Chris Bozel, Andrea Bradford, with the liturgist, um, as well as um, working the screen for us today. Chris had a computer glitch. But we are here to worship, and we are here to talk about this third Sunday of Advent. The Sunday of joy, where we light the pink candle <coughs> of joy in honor of Mary. That's what's <coughs> But we're going to start out as we usually do, as we don't usually do, with our opening carol. And our opening carol is O Come, O Ye Faithful. That's number 41 in your blue hymnal, but you have the lyrics in your bulletin as well, in your insert. So let us sing O Come, O Ye Faithful. Three verses with the chorus in between each two. Neighbor, I can't wait to hear you sing. I can't wait to hear you sing. That is now your permission <laughs> to be able to sing out as loud as you can. You know these songs. You don't gotta sound like 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 a, an opera star. Or you got we have an opera star voice already, so we got that cup. So we're all good. So you just sing from your heart's content and know that we are bringing you in this season. I wrote an Advent candle lighting prayer for us today, and as you can see, if you can see, we have two purples and a pink, so our pink candle that's being lit today is our third Advent candle lighting. What you see in the bowl is how you will respond with me, and I will read this in honor of Mary. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The words of Elizabeth, a blessing for Mary, 
is our blessing as well. And then Mary sings her song. My soul magnifies the Lord. So in times of weariness, war, pain, and sorrow, these two mothers of faith breathe light into a reassurance that God remembers us and that God cares. Now, although hope within may yet be unrealized without, we hold on because change is going to come. So let us say together, oh Lord, please hear our prayer. We light this first candle with hope that we will be ready and awake when you come, oh God. We light this second candle to testify to the light of peace, which is your will and your way. And we light this third candle, this pink candle in joy, not only to name it, but to claim it as a divine right. So now let us turn to our blue hymnal, page two, for our hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Yes, good morning, good morning. Our first lesson on our journey this morning is from Genesis, the third chapter, verses 8 through 15, and then verses 17 through 19. Adam and Eve disobey God's command and disrupt the order and goodness of creation. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, 
cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And to the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The first reading. Okay. O little town of Bethlehem, page 44 in your blue hymnals, also to be found in your insert. Abraham the second time from heaven. 
16 and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done me and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their city, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Our next hymn, we are actually told Emmanuel. The Presbyterian hymn note is number nine. We have the verses that we're going to be singing in your bulletin. So sing with us. Isaiah 9, verse 2, and verses 6 through 7. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness on them like a shot. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counsel, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. Hmm. The of David, his kingdom. He will establish it 
and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our next carol is a king on a midnight career. For our time, Isaiah 11, 1 through 4a, verses 6 through 9. The Messiah will come from the root of Jesse to restore the peace of creation. And let us not forget that this root of Jesse also comes from Ruth and the only story. The great, 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 great grandmothers of Jesus and the Christ. A shoot shall come out of Jesse. The stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow on its roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on them. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meat of the earth. And he shall strike down the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the mere breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. The wicked shall lie down with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf with the lion, and the fat men together. And the little child shall be dead. And the bear shall graze. The bear dog shall lie down. And the lion shall be strong like an ox. And the nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the water's desert. They will not hurt or destroy 
on all my holy, holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Let us hear now. Mary, did you know? And I would like to call to the podium. Mary. Thank you so much, Lemire, for that. Amen. And thank Amen. you for coming off of your performances with Harlem School of the Arts and sharing your gifts with us as well today. Thank you so much. And now let us hear from another one of our friends today, Quentin Lab. Who will read for us right next lesson? The fifth lesson is a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his word and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Mm -hmm. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Hear me, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thank you so much, Quentin. Yes. Yes. Well, now we hear that Mary said yes to the Lord. <laughs> Let it be according to your word, O oh God. So now the other angels are going to go out there and sing and tell the world that this will occur. Mary said yes. So let us sing. Hark the herald angels sing. All three verses that can be found in your bulletin and it's also in your hymnal at page 21. And stand up and let's sing this. We've been a little mellow lately, so now let's just get some blood to me and sing Hark 31. Well, it's in the <laughs> Hark the herald angels sing our three verses. <laughs> Bethlehem means house of bread. 
from the time of Naomi and Ruth and Boaz and his old, it means the town that is the house of bread from which all of our sustenance comes. So they are traveling to the place of sustenance to give birth to our Christ. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This is the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their town to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him or them in the end. Let us now sing this lullaby ahead to Jesus. Away in a manger. Oh, Lord. 
So hear this, Luke 2, 8 through 16, about the angels that appear to the shepherds in the field and announce the birth of the Messiah. Angels will appear when we are too busy doing our day-to-day -day business <laughs> to recognize that there are miracles around us. We are no shepherds. So this Advent here, this scripture that is for you. In that region where shepherds were living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. See, I 
I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign just for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And then suddenly this angel, there was a, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, oh, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Psalm 23, Psalm 23, in our hymnals, angels we have heard on high, is our next song to sing together. I'm going to ask that maybe we do stand for this one too, because we got some runs to do in this particular song. And we need our breath when we say, Glory. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, 
wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him off. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among them and the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time of the start of the Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Oh, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring word to me so that I may also go to him and pay homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there, Ahead of them went the star that had been there, one that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped right over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. <coughs> On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening the treasure chests, he offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. What a wonderful child. Jesus. <laughs> 
Give us the good news yeah. about the word. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> John, the first chapter, is our ninth lesson. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Amen. 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 Longing. Oh God, we long for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We long for peace. We long. We long for love to rule the world. How we long. In your word, O oh God, you give us consolation that although times are hard, that you are with us. You are with us still. You have been with us from the beginning. You have been with us through exile. You have been with us through slavery. You have been through with us through depression, through ups and downs and wars, and yet you are still there. And what a consolation to know that no matter what happens and no matter what befalls us, that you are there with us. Those are the first two Sundays of Advent and what we commemorated and what we held and what we studied. And this week, this week with lessons and carols, we are going to talk about simply reassurance. Well, you see, that's what these lessons and carols really do for us. They give us the reassurance to not forget that Jesus the Christ was born for us 
for our salvation, for our world, to make our hope yet unborn realize. This is the reassurance of Advent today. We are to be reassured after we long for so much and we see that it's not real in the world. We see that there's wars raging. We see the horror. And we think we can't do anything about it. We need to be consoling one another with the love that we have for one another and making sure that people understand that we are not down with this. We are not down with war. We are not down with murder. We are not down with oppression. We are not down with hurting one another. Oh my God. But we have a reassurance in God's word from the beginning of time. And I need you to really understand this idea of reassurance, because if we don't have this reassurance, then there's no sense of us even thinking of speaking that four letter word hope. Because if you don't trust and have reassurance that God is going to bring us through, that the reality of God's will is to make sure that all of these things will, in time, cease. Then what are you here for? What message of good news are you claiming if you can't claim that I know that my God's going to do it? I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'm here to tell you that my God will do it. Of this I am sure, and I will not question. <coughs> God is going to bring me out. God is going to carry us out. God is going to bring us together and show God's self out. God's going to make our hearts feel good in the midst of a rainy Sunday with Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Yeah. God is going to make our hearts sing with delight when we think about all that God has done to reassure us that we are not forgotten. Hmm. The people of Israel have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Some of them have forgotten that God said, I am sending you a Messiah. And because they forgot, they crafted their own caricature of what a Messiah needed to be. Hmm. They said, well, since we're suffering, we need and Messiah that can be someone who is like the emperor who can conquer Rome. We need someone who will take revenge for us and our suffering. We need someone to march into Jerusalem on a white horse or a black stallion from Arabia to show Caesar who's in charge. They wanted a Messiah that was just like the evil that moved over them. <laughs> and God said, you seem to forget who I am. <laughs> you seem to forget what I can do. I don't need a general to break bondage. I don't need anyone marching in with tanks or, or with, with missiles from the heavens to get my point across. You want to know how powerful I am, God says to us today? You want to know just how powerful I am in case you forgot? You want the assurance, the reassurance of how good I really am? I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring your salvation in a baby. No, he's not going to be born at the temple of Herod, this puppet king forever. No, he's not going to be born in a palace. No, I think he'll be born in a stable. I think he'd be a bed for him. I think I'm going to put him in a manger. I'm going to have someone put head in the place where the cows and the animals drink and eat. And that will be his bed. And I'm going to show you just how powerful I am. Because this child will come and bring salvation 
which is more important than any war's victory. It will save your souls. It will save your hearts. It will save love from extinction. That's what my baby is going to do. <laughs> In case you forget, I'm bringing my will and my gift in a baby. So that every single time you rush a mother to the hospital and deliver a child, you will be reminded <laughs> that my power stems from one so small. You will be reminded when that child comes and runs up and down the aisle, giving you artwork and playing music, you will be reminded that Jesus will not sit still when love needs to be shared. You will be reminded at all times that it is not these big complicated issues that we're talking about. It is God's will. It is God's will. And because we are simple, and because we ain't got good sense, does not change God's will. Yeah. So we have to hold on to God's will and never forget, never forget the promises of God. This Advent, this is what we're waiting for. For the veil to lift them over our heads so that every year we are reminded Every year it seems we get to the end of the year and, and the headlines change and they try and bring us down. They try and remind us of the misery of the world. They try and remind us of how horrible humanity really is. But God is saying, y'all can pay attention to that if you want. <laughs> think about this baby. And think about what I am doing through this baby. Ooh. In this child is the cure for sin and death. In this child is fixing up what happened in Genesis, our first lesson the separation. And the hiding from God. Jesus came in earthly flesh to say, God cannot be hidden. <laughs> God is a mighty. These nine lessons are so important because they need, we need the reminders of all time. Not just in December, but in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and then again in December. That Jesus is the Christ. Come to show us what God can do. And if that doesn't give you reassurance in this broken world in which we live, know what will. But keep on coming back here every Sunday and we'll do our best to remind you. Thank you. Thank you. Or on the whole back. Number 68 is the Sing these words and hear these words. And hear how silently hope is born. How silently reassurance is in body.
to God and prayers to God for Eric Williams who would have been online with us today but he's in the hospital this morning for a procedure they called him on Thursday and said coming on Sunday but as a double transplant recipient we know that they're likely to call him at any time just to check in on him and he's still here we give thanks to God our record breaker in Mount Sinai. In this moment, in the silence, look in your heart. See the concerns and the prayers that you have. See the thanksgivings and the gratitude that you have. And let us bring them to God. The gratitudes we bring to God so that God knows that we are not being haughty when we ask God for our concerns. 
We are just saying to God, we know that we've done it before. So we come to you knowing that you would do it again. Most loving and holy God, we come to you now in the hour of our need and in the hour of our joy. Lifting up prayers to you on high that you thought so much of us, thought so much of my, what might happen to us if we did not have grace and mercy that you gave us your son. You thought so much of us that you gave us salvation. Salvation that we could not acquire for ourselves. Salvation that we did not have the wherewithal in our spirits and in our intellect and in our hearts to actually say, God, save us. If we, if we can't articulate those words, God said, I will give you a savior. And yes, you did that. Why? Because you love us. And glory for your love. Honor for your love. Joy for your love. May we be poured into with this love to overflowing, oh God, so that our prayers will, will come forth from us whenever we, whenever we close our eyes and whenever we open our eyes and just think on you and the goodness of you and see someone in need. Whether it's someone who is in our own household who is struggling struggling with something that, that they can't quite put into words and they don't want to talk about it to us. They don't want to talk about it to friends. But God, we know that there's something on their heart. So God, please touch them. Touch them. Let them feel our spirit just say, it's all right. You don't have to tell us because God knows and God will ferret it out and God will bless you. Help us be the conduits of your grace and your mercy. God, in this broken world, we ask that although we do not have the seats in the United Nations and we do not occupy the Oval Office of the White House or palaces abroad, we ask that you would let our prayers be more powerful than the pen. More powerful than any edict, more powerful than any argument of over what is humanly right or wrong because we know what breaks your heart. May we love you so much, oh God, that we clamor to our leaders and say, stop breaking God's heart. Stop hating one another. Stop race baiting one another. Stop killing children in the name of war. Stop breaking my God's heart. May our prayers be full and powerful. May they reach the streets around us. Give shelter to those who during tonight's storm will wonder, should I risk it and go inside? Or should I just stay out here in the rain and suffer? Bless them, O oh God, let them know that we are with them in our prayers. And more than that with our prayers, that if they walk to us, through these doors, and if they walk, if we walk without, that we can touch them and be a part of your solution. We may not know how right now, oh God, to fix our hearts so that our commitment grows, so that none goes without. So God, as we move through this season, Advent and Christmas, we ask that you would let the Holy Spirit do a double portion of its work. And bless those who are weeping. Bless those who are remembering that last Christmas, somebody sat across the table from them. Last Christmas, somebody sat on the couch with them. Last Christmas, they begged somebody to come to church and they said, oh, not this year. God, we ask that you would bring peace to those hearts. 
And no prayer, O oh God, of us, of us, your people, would be complete if we didn't say thank you. <laughs> thank you for the man. We thank you for her gift and her training that she shares with us. We thank you for Shelby and her first semester in college. Semester in college. We thank you, oh God, for Maurice and Amari and all that they are doing in the world. We thank you, oh God, for the young ones running about here today, knowing that they are loved and that this space is their home. We ask, oh God, that you would touch their hearts and be with them so that they can continue to teach us all the things we've forgotten because we grew up. All of those named and unnamed God, we thank you, we ask prayers for. And in this moment of silence, oh God, we speak to you. All this we pray in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Please never let it pass by your imagination that when we pray in silence today, that New York City stays quiet for us. Look at what God does for us. Thanks be to God. Eight million people stayed silent so that you could pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God, as Eric Adam Shepard said. The wise men, or the Magi, and their entire gosh, it wasn't just three guys, it's on And a whole group of people with them, men, women. They brought gifts to the baby Jesus. They brought gold, which is probably what they lived on when they went over to Egypt. Frankincense and myrrh. These aren't quite joyous gifts. Those are the spices with which you rub the body before you put them in the tomb. They're the promise of what is to come with Jesus. But they brought these gifts for the good times and the bad times in Jesus. So now, we ask you to share your gifts for the good times and the bad times <laughs> for those who are working to minister from St. James Presbyterian Church. If you are online, you can of course go to our website at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org where you can go down to that little PayPal button and give. Some of you have already scheduled your payments and we thank you for that. We also want to let you know that you can mail them in to 409 West 141st Street, New York, New York, 10031-6400. And we thank Amy and Jay for being here with us today.
Come over, come over. West Harlem at two o'clock downstairs in the Dorothy Maynard Theater. Um, Aurora Stage Company will be producing and performing Christmas Comes to West Harlem. You can see all the wonderful people that will be performing with us downstairs. We had rehearsal yesterday, it was a lot of fun. And because of Actors Equity's rule, we have to put the five dollar ticket price there. But if anybody can't afford the five dollar ticket price in the room, just let me know. But we're going to have a reception back there, and that's about which we will partake and to nourish our bodies and sustain us for a little bit. And we thank Wendy for making those sandwiches and dropping them off on her way to the hospital. Amen. I saw her back there. And God, we say amen to that. So definitely come downstairs, 2 p.m. downstairs for, yes, today. Today, 2 o'clock, we're going to do it all at once. So we're going to do it, do this, all this music, all day long. And thank God for that. Christmas comes to West Harlem downstairs in the Dorothy Museum Theater at 2 p.m. Thanks be to God. Chris, we hope that you, uh, Chris's computer was updated by the seminary and they didn't fix it in time for him to be on Zoom. So maybe he can get here for later on today and join us for our coffee hour and so on and so forth. So, you have heard the nine lessons. You have heard the cash. You had some good times. Yeah. You've heard some of the slow dirges of our Christmas town from the very beginning of the season. But they brought Christ. We said, who's under my love? And the angel said, he's here. So now we go from this place and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God brought a baby to change the world. Didn't need a king. Didn't need an emperor. Didn't need a president or a dictator. Just a baby born in the manger. So with that, we say, and then we will have more. So we will go singing and go tell it on the mountain, and we will have this led to us by ruling elder Oscar Maxwell the third. And we thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lamia, right? Thank you all. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Quentin. And thank you, Steph. You're welcome. It's all you on.